Hello Facebook, hello YouTube, welcome. Welcome to, to tonight's broadcast. I wanna say God bless you, wherever you're watching from. I hope you're doing fantastic. We're gonna take a second before we jump into tonight's message titled, Always Look to the Cross. I'm excited about tonight's message. It's something I, I feel very strongly about. I believe in it with all my heart. I know the word of God is true, and I'm excited for what God's gonna do in your life. If nobody's told you lately, you matter. God loves you, he has a purpose for you. He wants to bless you. He wants you to know his word. The Bible says that God desires for every, <clears throat> every human being to be with him in paradise, to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. If you're saved and you come to a knowledge of the truth, you get to live with God in paradise forever. Praise God. Welcome, Dad. Welcome, Max. God bless you. Please drop a comment. Uh, for, let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to know the city and state or the nation of the world if you're watching overseas. God bless you. Hi, Becky. Hope you're well. I hope everyone is doing well who is in New England, um, or at least in Massachusetts. I'm wearing a hoodie tonight because I'm not done with snow removal, so I decided, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna let it rip from here and rely on the power of God. So, praise God. Max, love you too. Glad to see your pursuit of the Lord and your faith in Him. I want to welcome again everyone who's watching from YouTube, both now and in the future. Um, I love you. God loves you. I pray that you're blessed and highly favored. I know I have family and good friends who are watching, and so I hope this message finds you very well. Always look to the cross. We must always look to the cross. Galatians 6.14 says, Paul wrote to the church in Galatia, As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has also died. And that's what I'll finish tonight's message with. Because hopefully, the message of the cross of Jesus Christ sinks in, and God changes your heart and mind, and you learn something about what really matters, eternity. The word, what the Word of God has to say about you and I, you know, there's a real heaven to gain and there's a real hell to lose. I wish more people, you know, who say they believe that there's a God, that they would do some more seeking while they're here. Let me read about the rich man and Lazarus. I was reading about it earlier, reading the story. And it hit me. It just, it just struck me with the, the intensity of, of what the rich man went through. Listen to this. Luke 6. 1619 Luke 16:19 I hope everyone's year is off to a phenomenal start These are the words of Jesus Christ If you haven't shared it please go ahead and share the broadcast so that the word of God can get in front of people who need to hear it who haven't made the decision to place their faith in the cross of Jesus Christ and to be made right with God. I care, I'm here for you, for them, for all people to bring glory to God and do what he's called me to do. It would have been much easier just to stay what I'm, you know, stay doing what I was doing. But that's what, you know, men do. Men don't go home when they're tired. They go home when the job is done. So I'm here to get the job done. Luke 16, 19. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen, who lived each day in luxury. 
At his, <clears throat> at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. The rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. I read that story, and I was thinking, that would be the case today. If people aren't making time for the word of God and finding out that he's true, that he's real, that he's faithful, that he's there, that he's willing to heal them and save them and deliver them and change their life, and all it takes is, is them placing their faith in Christ, then it's not going to happen if someone comes back from the dead to warn them. It's through the power of the word of God in the power of his spirit the people are changed. And this rich man who is in hell, in a real hell, he said he was in he said, I'm in anguish in these flames. He was burning. He wanted just a, a, a drop of water. But while he lived, he couldn't even spare the scraps for, for Lazarus, who was uh, a beggar, who was poor and had nothing. Now, this doesn't mean that God sends rich people to hell and takes poor people to heaven. That's not it. It's people who are justified by their faith in God. People who are justified by the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's talk about the cross. Let's talk about the wonderful sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Praise God, what, a, what an honor it is to teach and preach God's powerful word. I'm here for fruit. I'm here so that someone will hear the message of Jesus Christ and be saved, healed, delivered. They have their heart and their mind changed. Do we need another major crisis for, to have people on here attentively watching the Word of God, attentively hearing? The people want to know information, but everything's kind of settled, you know, since, since COVID-19 uh, broke out. You know, everything's kind of somewhat, people have adapted. But that doesn't change the need for God's Word and the, and the need for the faith, people's faith in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 through 31. If you're watching and you agree with this message, drop a comment below. Always look to the cross. And it was through a friend's situation tonight that this message came to be, always look to the cross. He took a picture and sent it to me. And in the picture, he could see a cross. And I, I text them back, always look to the cross. Always look to the cross, praise God. 
Write in the comments. Always look to the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 through 31. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness. Listen, 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 listen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom, <laughs> this is so good. This is how you know that, that man didn't write the Bible. They penned it, but the author is the Holy Spirit. For since in the wisdom, uh, sorry, for, for, <laughs> for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. It's through, through the foolishness of the preaching of the message of the cross that people are being saved. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, a stumbling block and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The foolishness of God is far beyond the most intelligent, the wisest person who ever has lived or ever would live. And the weakness of God far surpasses any strength of human human power you have to remember something God spoke this entire world into existence verse 26 for you see your calling brethren that you that not many wise according to the flesh I'm going to the new living translation Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. That's how I feel. Complete chump when God called me. I was, I was a punk kid. That's not in the Bible. Um, verse 27. Instead, God chose the things that the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God, he made us pure and holy and freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. This talks about the wisdom of the world and the people who consider themselves powerful or maybe even are powerful in this world. But if you stand with Jesus Christ and you place your faith in him now, You'll stand with him in eternity. On judgment day, when every person, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, stands before the, th the throne of God and gives an account for their life, you will be blessed, you will be saved, you will receive an inheritance. And, and that's, that's not... 
Sure, that's the finish line. That's the beginning of eternity. But if you look to the cross now and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you accept the word of God in your heart and you repent from sin, which means to change your mind about sin. It means you're headed in one direction. You're willingly putting these things down and turning to God. You're putting down alcoholism. You're putting down drugs. You're putting, putting off fornication. You're putting off fits of rage and selfish ambition. And you're allowing Christ to come inside you by his spirit and make all things new in your life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 For if any person be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's a difference for the person who has spiritually been born again, they have new life in Christ. They're made alive unto God. They know, we know he's there. We know, we see the evidence in creation. He answers our prayers. We know his voice. Those of us who fast and pray, read the word of God and are committed to him, are supposed to know him intimately. When you spend time in prayer, you get to know the voice of God. So many people say, I don't hear God speak. You probably never put down the plate long enough um, and spent time on your knees in the presence of God to know, to get used to. Is, see, see, the voice of God doesn't always thunder out of heaven. It's a small, still voice that he desires to lead you and guide you by faith. By faith. It's all by faith. It's by faith that we seek God, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Jesus said in John 14, 21, those who love me will obey my commandments and they will be loved by me and by my Father. And then he said, I will manifest myself to them. He said, I will make myself known to them. There's a point at which you don't, it's not just by faith, God will reveal himself to you. He desires that you would walk closely with him. The Bible talks about a man named Enoch in the book of Genesis. I believe it, I want to say it's Genesis 19. And he walked, let me see. Let me see where Enoch is. Oh no, that's Joseph, also one of my favorite Bible characters in story. Listen, God's not after uh, church attendance. He's not after you obeying the law. Only, he's not only after obedience. He's not, it's not a religious practice that God desires. He wants relationship with you. Genesis 5. So that the world hadn't been stained by thousands of years of sin yet. Genesis 5, before Christ, verse 21. Nope, this talks about... Listen, listen, listen how closely a man, a human being, walked with God. Yes, Genesis 5.21. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. Welcome, Abby. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day, he disappeared because God took him. This man walked so closely with God that God took him home. He never saw death. That's the type of relationship I want with, with God. You know, if you look to the cross of Christ and you make the decision 
to follow him, all things become new in your life. You don't have to accept sickness and disease. You don't have to be under the yoke of, of poverty. You don't have to be under the generational curses of what your ancestors did. Many people, their, their father, mother, grandfather, whoever, someone in their bloodline opened themselves up to witchcraft and to, to demonic things. And that gets passed down. You need the covenant relationship with God through the cross of Jesus Christ to break these things. Some people's lives are cursed and he stands willing and ready to break these curses off of your life. To break addiction off of your life. To bring, to bring you uh, every good thing. The Bible says every good and perfect thing comes from our Father comes from our Heavenly Father in whom there's no shadow or shifting. God, every good thing that, that a person receives is a blessing from God. And He loves you and He desires to bless you. When you know Christ, suffering has to go. There may be trials, there may be temptations and tribulation for a little bit, but if you'll pursue and you'll persist and you'll seek Him, joy is on the other side. Love is on the other side. Peace is on the other side. Rest, true rest. People don't have peace nowadays. People have to take pills to wake up, pills to go to bed. And a life with Jesus Christ can fix all that. He can make all things new. He can make you healthy in your body, healthy in your mind. I remember what it was like. I, I remember not living with Jesus and being subject to whatever demon of depression wanted to sit on me that day and just having the most uh, destructive thoughts. But Jesus will provide you with new life. Can you say amen? Mike Picardi, great to see you. I miss you. I hope all is well. God bless you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. No, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, it, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that I, while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness. Excuse me. <coughs> Timid and trembling. <coughs> That's so frustrating. It happens. Maybe God wants us both to listen closely. I came to you <coughs> in weakness <coughs> and in coughing. That's not in there. Timid <coughs> and trembling. And my, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using cle clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who will come and change your heart for God. The Bible says no man can come to God unless by his Spirit. The Bible says that he looks over he looks to confirm his word. His word is being taught right now. His word is being preached. And the spirit of God is who will convict us of sin and let us know that the truth is that Jesus Christ died for us and rose again on the third day. And that anyone who believes in him in their heart and confesses with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord will be saved to the glory of God. There's nothing I care about more than people being saved. I'm here consistently every Saturday night. I say it all the time, but I, I want you to know this isn't to be in, in front of a camera. This isn't 
to, to make money. This, this is so that people would be saved. Jesus is coming back. And there's a lukewarm, there's a lukewarm body of believers who say, yeah, I believe that's true. Um, but my kid has soccer on Sundays. There's no commitment. If you're the man of your household, the Bible says you're, you're the high priest. You have a duty to fulfill. You need to, to sit with your, fam, your family and teach them the word of God. You need to open the Bible. You need to make time for the, the word preached. You have to bring them into the house of God. Whoever you are, start where you're at. You start praying. You start finding people to pray with. Friends, family, people who care about God. And, and, and we're going to see... Folks, listen, I'm here because I love you. The only people who really see these messages right now are friends and family and, and people a little bit more distance. Plenty of strangers watch, but the thing is, I don't want it to be too late for you to realize what the truth is. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to come to God and to turn from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sacrifice of Christ. This is what the sacri sacrifice of Christ is. 1 John 2, verse 2, in the Amplified Bible. And he, that same Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins. The atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of God that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature our worldliness, our lifestyle. And not for ours alone, but also for the sins of all believers throughout the whole world. Praise God. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He is the one that stands, who stood in the gap for all of mankind once and for all to destroy the power of sin to destroy the power and the work of the devil against humanity, that you would be saved, that you would be favored by God, that you would know his love and his peace and his joy and his hope, the hope of the return of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Welcome, Vitor. God bless you. Dudubain, I love seeing your posts. God bless you abundantly, brother. 1 John 2, 2 in the New Living Translation. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they, they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment to love one another is the same message you have heard before, yet it is, it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment, and you also are living it. Listen to this. For the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. I am writing to you who are God's children, because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I am writing to you who are mature in the faith, because you know Christ, who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in the faith, because you have won your battle with the evil one. I have written to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I have written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ, who existed from the beginning. 
I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. Praise God. What, see, what I don't get, I want to do a message called the mature Christian. What I don't understand is people who are going to church who claim to be spiritual, who, who claim to love God, and exactly like the Bible says, they bite and devour one another. They talk down about one another. They talk down to each other. It, it's just terrible. I see it. Listen, I'm not perfect. But if you're dealing with a harsh person, you're to love them beyond their sin, beyond their persecution of you. It, it, it's totally contrary to our human nature. But if we're made alive to God through Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in us. He helps us with that. He guides us through it. He tells us to be slow to anger and quick to forgive according to his word. See, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will put you in remembrance of what I've said. But if you don't know what Jesus said, how can the Holy Spirit remind you of it? That's why the word is important. That's why it's the word and the spirit is how we're tied to God. Jesus is the word of God. First John, uh, John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So, Jesus Christ is the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes us alive unto him. And he reminds us of what Jesus has said through his word. This is why it's important to be in the word. This is, the Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. He didn't say my people perish for a lack of prayer. He says my people perish for a lack of, uh, of, a lack of knowledge. If you don't know the word of God, you're subject to whatever the world has to say. All those, all those commercials, if you're over 50, you, you might be suffering uh, from COPD or, or whatever, elemental Q, P, O, S, whatever. It's all a bunch of freaking bullcrap from hell. If you know the word of God, you can declare it over your life. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. You will have the consequences of what you say. But if you don't know that, if you don't know the power of life and death is in the tongue, you're subject to speaking just whatever. You have to watch your confession and you have to know what the word of God says. When I come up against a, a, a hard situation or something that doesn't seem to be going in my favor... I say, great. Romans 8.28 says that, And we know all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And I just say, praise God. I, I love God. I'm called according to his purpose. So things will work out for me. The situation is going to work out for me. I'll have favor. Thank you, God, ahead of time for favor. And so many times, it's like a daily basis where things don't seem to go the, the way I want, and all of a sudden I go, what, did I fall out of favor with God? And I start overthinking it. And then I see the details of a situation play out, and I say, praise God, he knew, he, he's, he's, he's the Almighty, he's, he's, he knows everything. He's the one who always was. We must place our faith in him. Galatians 2.20 <clears throat> I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I know what it's like. I know what Paul's saying here. Because when I, when I decided to lay it all down and say, you know what, I'm, I'm done trying to live on my own. I give my life to you, Lord. The love of the world went away from me. And the book, the word of God came alive in my life. I've been enlightened by the Holy Spirit. My prayers get answered. I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm favored, I'm blessed. I trust his word and his word tr proves to be true. 
Praise God. I used to love the things of the world. I used to worship, you know, automobiles and, and, and riches and luxury and fame and, and all the lusts and the desires of the flesh. But I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. There's, there's a million things that have happened in the last three years. Big exaggeration there. There's thousands of things that have happened in the last three, four years that I've been living for Christ that I could not have done on my own. I, that I couldn't do in my own strength. I, could, I can't do it in my own understanding. A lot of it, you know, has to do with other people, our situations, what we come across every day, how we speak, how we think, how we act, how we treat others. When someone treats us poorly and, and, and we are like Christ and we forgive them, we don't retaliate, we, we don't... There's someone who's very close to me who goes through it on the regular. And, and they tell me, I didn't react, I didn't say anything, I just, you know, walked away. In preparation of tonight's message, I was reading this this very same thing. We still have, I, I probably still have it in Open Bible. Go to openbible.info and you can search. It's a topical Bible and you can search by topic. So if you want to know what the Bible says about something, it's super helpful. Praise God. Listen to this. Okay, I thought it was here. I'm sure it is. Welcome, Rich. I'm heading back out after this to continue with snow removal. God bless you. Glad to see you. Glad to know you, as always. Nope, the scripture that I was looking for wasn't here. But it's in the being made alive with Christ. What I just read is what Paul wrote to the Galatian church. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you know that the Son of God gave himself for you, can you say amen? Write it in the comments. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. God bless you. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Put a marker here. 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is so good. You don't want to miss this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. There's nothing I would say with more enthusiasm, meaning, uh, pureness of heart. When it comes from me, when I, I'm living out the scripture, come back to God. Come back to God. There's a real hell where people are being tormented and suffering. And there's a real heaven that he wants you in. And he wants to spend eternity with you. And I can't wait for that day. Come back to God. Verse 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Praise God. We are made right with God through Christ. Always look to the cross. Know that Jesus died, was nailed to it unjustly. He was perfect, having no sin. 
bore our sin. He took your sin. The Bible says that you're a new creation when you come to Christ. That the old things have passed away. Your whole life is to become new. That you're supposed to take that identity. You're supposed to take that identity and say, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I want my teaching and preaching of the Word of God to be as applicable to your life as, pos as humanly possible. And to let you know, I go through it, listen, and, and there's, there's things that the Holy Spirit guards my heart and mind against on a daily basis. He causes me to love people. He causes me to speak faith. He causes me to pray. He causes me to call on the name of the Lord. And He, and he wants that for you. He wants a close walk with you. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes in and makes Christ alive in you. Who He dwells in you by your Spirit. The Father and the Son are, the, are on the throne in heaven. The Holy Spirit, He comes and lives on the inside of the believers, making you alive unto Christ. And if you'll, if you'll look to the cross today, He'll do it for you. And in, in closing, Galatians 6.14 the same verse which with I opened. As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has also died. I don't love the world anymore. The things of this world are passing away. Unfortunately, this whole world's going to come to an end and it's going to burn the end of this age. But all of those who stand with Christ now will be saved, will be healed, will be delivered, will be brought to paradise for eternity. Now, I want to give the invitation, the invitation to come to Christ once and for all. If you felt, if you've fallen away from him, but you say it's time to come back and give myself completely to him, let's pray. I'm giving an invitation, but the Bible says that God commands, He commands every person to repent from sin and turn to Him to be saved. I want you to be saved. I'm making that same plead. Like the Bible says, come to God. Come to God today. Don't put off any longer. Jesus Christ is coming soon. It's no longer a matter of what if. This isn't, this isn't the 90s anymore. The world is quickly changing, becoming a totally different place. We've seen an acceleration of things in the past three years, a Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes. Time is running out. And tomorrow is promised to no person. It's time for us to come to Him and to be saved, to make our confession. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and you confess your confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Let me wrote, read it to you since I butchered it so well. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is, is Lord... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and D Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Praise God. But how can they call on Him unless they believe in Him? And how can they believe in Him if they never have heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. I'm the messenger. Here's the good news. Jesus died for you. God is calling you to calling you to himself. 
And on the other side is all the hope, all the love, all the joy, all the peace, all the blessings, all the salvation. Every good thing that exists is for you. No more suffering when you come to Christ. Come to him today. Let's pray. If you're feeling that way, if you say, hey, I want to be made right with God. I, I, I want to do business with him and be safe and secure and sound. When my head hits the pillow tonight, I can say, I know I'm saved. Then pray with me. Then take my hand as I take the hand of Jesus Christ and join the, them two together by faith. Let's pray. If that's you, please bow your head where you are and close your eyes so you're not distracted. And we're going to pray a biblically sound prayer to give your whole heart and your whole life to Jesus Christ. Say these words, Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that your Son Jesus Christ died for me. And that he is the savior of the whole world. And I want to make him my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And forgive me of my sins. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. And baptize me with fire. I want to know you. I want to live for you. I thank you for making me right with God. I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior, and I will live for him. I'm a born-again Christian. My home is in heaven. I have new life in Christ. All the curses are broken. New life is mine. I plead the, pl the precious blood of Jesus Christ over my life. And I ask all of this in the authority and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. And there's power for every person available, the power of God, by His Word and by His Spirit. And if you've just been saved... I want you to write a comment or write to me that, that you've been saved for the first time. If you've come back to him after being away, salvation doesn't wear off in a week unless you're out like, you know, shooting hookers or something like wicked. Uh, you don't say the sinner's prayer every time there's an altar call in, in church. So I just kind of want to put that theology out there that, that you can be away from God for a while, but you can come back. And you must come back to Him for good. And you must live holy. He said, be holy because I am holy. He said, be holy because I am holy, which means I, I'm holy. I give you the power to be holy by my Spirit. Praise God. Listen, I will attempt, I always say that I will, I'll attempt to leave a link for PayPal if you want to leave an offering for my ministry. This is for the work of God, the work of ministry, so that His word will go forth. This doesn't pay for my Bible college. This doesn't pay for my, my private life and everything. But the Bible says that if you sow into the work of God, that you'll be blessed, that you'll receive a reward, that you'll receive a harvest for what you do. And I've seen that I, I'm a personal living testament of sowing and reaping, of putting seed into the kingdom of God, targeting the kingdom of God with my finances, knowing that I'll re receive a harvest. Let's see if I can go to it real quick. Is it Ephesians? I believe it's 3.8. Chapter 3, verse 8. might be 6, 8.
Listen to this. Ephesians 6, 8. Knowing, <clears throat> excuse me, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is free or slave. Knowing that whatever good thing each one does, he will receive from the Lord. So God bless you as you give. Let me put a comment below before I get off. And I want to say thank you for being with me. Please join me on a weekly basis here to hear the word of God. It's all about hearing the word of God. It's all about knowing the word of God, knowing God through his word. And he'll change your life and he'll bless you. He loves you. And I love you. You matter. Your life matters. Your life matters more than anything in this world. Why is this so difficult? I need to like screenshot directions. It's like a QR code. Oh my gosh. Well, that's the conclusion of tonight's broadcast. God bless you if you're sowing into the work of ministry, in, into my ministry. I pray, I pray that he blesses you a hundredfold. A lot of the times I just pretty much give up because it's not. Super clear. Kevin, God bless you. David Wallace, God bless you. Anyone else who's with us, drop a comment below. Thank you for, for being with us tonight. I hope to see you again. Max said, hey Rob, how do you give to your ministry? That's what I'm attempting to find out right now is with a PayPal link. Right now it, it's, I'll be looking to develop other ways um, as soon as I start an official 501c3 so that it's tax deductible as well. But for now, it's just going to be through PayPal. So if anybody has it memorized, here it is. Share your link. Copy. I'm going to drop a link in the comments below. I can share a hundred stories of how I've been blessed by sowing into the work of God. This is not about, yeah, Venmo is, Venmo is easy too. You're right, I, I have Venmo. Maybe. What do you have to do for Venmo? Just share your handle, your Venmo handle. Log in. Let me see what my Venmo handle is while I'm here doing nothing. If you have a testimony you want to share, I'd love to hear of testimonies that God's doing in your life. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Some night I'm just going to come on here and, and share testimonies the whole time. I'll have it prepared, obviously, but... It will just be to share about how God has moved in my life and how he'll, he'll move in your life. Praise God. God is good and his mercy endures forever. He loves you so much. He desires that you would call on him, that you would walk with him on a daily basis.
just made the most ridiculous password. If anyone knew you, you'd be like, are you serious? Great, another password verification. Yeah, Max, you, you asked for my, uh, well, you said Venmo is easy too. You didn't ask for it, but my Venmo handle, which I can transfer um, into my ministry account, would be Robert-Keenan-2. And there's a big a picture of my cheesy smile on there, so you know it's me. But anyways, God bless you. I love you. God loves you. Have a super night. And I'm going to move some snow. <laughs>